I don't have anything. I'm just here and they're killing my friends. And um, I had a cousin in August, his name is Shadi, Rahimullah. And uh, Shadi, he, he was in prison. My, my freshman year of college was his first year in jail. He's released from prison at like 12, maybe 11, 12 uh, 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 p.m. in the morning. And uh, like afternoon, I mean, like uh, eleven to twelve. Yeah. Uh, afternoon, and then um, he was dead by twelve by twelve a.m. He was dead by twelve a.m. He was shot at a block party that was celebrating him being released from prison. Um, and I won't right. add, I won't talk about details from his death in particular. But uh, I got the call from my mom. She said, I, you know, I think I think something happened bad. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I think they shot Shadi. I heard that. I hung up. And I ran like I don't know, like fifteen blocks to get over there, and I got there like pretty quickly. And um, and I got there, and he was just on the ground. He bled internally, so he had, he wore a tank top and capris, and he had on some Nike sneakers with uh, with black socks. And um, the bullet was in his chest, and I remember it. I remember the smell of burnt flesh, and um, and I and I remember thinking to myself, why can't I see the blood come out of his body? There was just like a little spot on his uh, tank top, and I'm just thinking to myself, like I didn't know anything about bleeding internally, or I didn't know about any of that stuff. I'm just wondering, like, well, he shot. I can, sm I'm hugging him. I can smell flesh, but where's the blood? Um, uh, my uncle, uh, who I grew up with in my house, like my big brother, he was shot that day. Uh, some other people were shot that day as well. And, uh, but I'm just looking at my cousin, who's my friend and, um, he's just dead. And uh, I'm picking my head up and I see his brother. I see my cousins. I see, and the ambulance just did not come. It just felt like, it just felt like it took forever for the ambulance to come. And, um, and so, yeah, we were very lost and confused. That's how we learned about a janazah. You know, they, you know, I went in there and um, you're not allowed to speak about the body or what you saw in the room. So I can't speak about it. But anyone who's done a janazah, especially for uh, someone who was shot, uh, they, they can, you know, they understand what I'm saying if they hear this. So that, that's all I can say about that. But I was in the room um, and I remember certain things that changed my life forever, that absolutely changed my life forever. And uh, uh my wife, uh, at that time, I wasn't, I was practicing, I was like, I'm a Muslim, because we were born Muslims into a Muslim family, but we weren't really practicing deen. So I had a girlfriend and everything. And uh, my my girlfriend at the time, um, she she came to the to the janazah, it was like her first time in hijab. And um, and uh, she watched us bury my cousin with our bare hands. She watched us get in the grave. She watched us hand him down. Um, and then she watched us move this whole pile of dirt with, with our hands and shovels. And, um, and from that, she became a Muslim. Um, and we've been married for 10 years now and we have a beautiful family and children. So his death did a lot for me. Um, more, his, his death helped me live. I don't have anything. I'm just here and they're killing my friends. And, um, and um, so in our communities, when you want to be a man, when you actually really want to say, you know what, I'm done. I want to live a good life, a wholesome life, a life that matters. I'm going to contribute to my community be a man for my family, be a husband, be, be a father to my children. And I'm going to have children at the time. Um, you be a Muslim. So I went to the masjid because there was this uh, guy. That